we now start with our discussion on unit 3 on applied corporate finance and this this unit is going to measure the investment returns for uh, for any project essentially so far we have this uh, we have learned about the discount rates that we are going to use now what to discount is basically going to come here so essentially in our equation of cash flow divided by 1 plus r the 1 plus r part we have already seen right now in this particular session we're going to look at what is the cash flow part and how do we arrive at that and how do we really discount that what kind of returns are generated we will also look at details and revisit our NPV versus IRR rules to grasp as to you know when uh, when does the when does NPV work better and when does IRR work better for what kind of projects is NPV better and for what kind of projects is IRR better right as we go along we'll start kind of discussing some of these data points which are cash flows versus earnings what do we mean by a project what and how do we measure returns what are the multiple ways we can measure returns uh, various investment decision rules when do we use uh, NPV when do we use IRR approaches to investment analysis and mutually exclusive projects so as we go along these terms will become clearer and clearer right let's first focus on the idea that we are looking at here which is the return should magnitude uh, reflect the magnitude and timing of the cash flows as well as all side effects right which means if you are taking a project or if you're taking a, an endeavor whatever additional ancillary impacts are happening because of that have to be taken into account right uh, we have learned a little bit of this earlier in our financial management portion which is uh, if you take a project and that results in loss of revenue and existing uh, business then essentially that has to be taken into account here right so that's what we're going to try and do we're going to look at live examples in this case and then try and apply that to the learning that we have in terms of corporate finance right the first concept that we need to understand is the cash flow versus accounting earnings uh, basis and what is it that we should ideally be using in terms of uh, calculation of our uh, investment returns right remember that accounting earnings are measured on the basis of accrual right which means when revenue is booked it's kind of accounted regardless of whether it has come in or not come in right similarly when costs are booked they're accounted regardless of whether they have come in or not come in revenues are booked when the goods and services are sold and not when the money is received costs are similarly booked for those revenues and not when the money is paid correct now when you look at cash flows on the other hand that's something else we'll come to that in a moment we also need to understand what is operating versus capital expenditure only expenses associated with creating revenue in the current period should be treated as operating expenses what would be examples of this salary is an example of this electricity cost is an example of this right expenses that create revenue over several periods essentially they should be written off over multiple periods as depreciation or amortization right examples of this would be any kind of capital expenditure that you're doing any kind of license expenditure that you're doing so for example telecom companies go and take a license so essentially that is amortized over a period of time license being an intangible asset will get amortized over a period of time correct now that is an important construct in our overall understanding of uh, of what to classify as capital expenditure and what to classify as account operating expenditure when you look at cash flow from uh, from accounting earnings you have to add back any non-cash expenditures which is depreciation or amortization that you have already cut out right you have to subtract out cash flows not expensed right that is essentially capital expenditures these are not expensed to that year remember so you have to remove the capital expenditure and we have to make changes by looking at cash revenue and expenses instead of you know the accounted revenues and expenses and that is all the changes that will come on account of working capital correct let's take the example and revise this concept when you're starting from accounting earnings that's net profit right remember when you are coming to net profit how do you arrive at net profit you arrive at net profit as sales minus costs all costs right that gives you the net profit now in all costs you have also already subtracted the depreciation 
which is actually not a cash outflow. So you have to add the depreciation or amortization back, right? This we have already done earlier. We're just revising this, correct? Now you realize that only the costs will only include the expenses and operating expenses. The costs will not include what are capital expenditures. So you have to subtract the capital expenditures. Let's say we buy a car for 5 lakh rupees. That 5 lakh rupees is not included here at all. That 5 lakh rupees has to has to come here in capital expenditure, correct? And now when you come to net profit, remember we assume that all sales have been received and all costs have been paid. Now if that has not happened, all sales have not been received. So you make changes to what is working capital, right? It is minus increase in current assets for example receivables if all sales have not been received let's say last year receivables were 100 zero and this year receivables are 100 so this is last year and this is current year then obviously receivables have gone by gone up by 100 that means 100 has not been received if 100 has not been received that essentially has to get uh, get accounted here in this case right plus any increase in current liabilities right if you have not paid money that's still lying with you as cash and this bit should give me my broad cash flows right there are some other changes of course that also happen but broadly this is where bulk of the cash flows would come from correct so that's essentially where you arrive at cash flow from accounting earnings that's a quick revision of the concept we've already had let's now go ahead and talk about how do we measure returns now the measurement of returns will only be correct if we measure returns on cash flows ideally we should look at returns on cash flows and over a period of time cash flow should be equal to earnings right so if my net profit for year one net profit for year two net profit for year three net profit for year four ideally you know we'll, we'll obviously make adjustments for depreciation and all uh, and cash flow for year one cash flow for year two cash flow for year three and cash flow for year four then logically barring my depreciation adjustments and capex adjustments they should be equal right they should always add up to become equal over this period let's say the project is for four years right so essentially it is important for us to gauge that uh, that there might be timing differences but those timing differences are important in our discussion and given that over a period of time everything that has been in profit has been received that should anyway come back to the cash flows so ideally we should be measuring returns on cash flows and not necessarily accounting earnings because at the end of the day the shareholders or the stakeholders are worried about hard cash they should get the cash just accounting for profit and then not receiving it is not going to help right returns are measured on incremental cash flows which are cash flows that are a consequence of the decision rather than the total cash flows remember you might already be getting some cash flows it is important to look at the context of the project you are taking that are the cash flows getting added because of that project let's say you are opening a new factory so a company has three factories and the decision is to open up one new factory only the cash flows that come because of this one new factory have to be taken into account none of the cash flows of the first three factories are going to be taken into account if the decision is around measuring returns for this particular factory correct so and then you time weight the cash flows which means that earlier cash flows are weighted more than the later cash flows that's simple uh, present value calculations obviously the earlier cash flows will get discounted at one plus r one plus r square and so on and so forth so their weight will automatically become higher the earlier you get money the better it is for the stakeholders correct that's the concept of measuring returns on the on the uh, on the projects right now we need to understand what exactly do we mean by a project any choice by a firm which includes a decision to invest money and you know the the possibility looks at what returns can come out of it can be called a project 
what are examples so if you're expanding capacity you're launching a new product line so for example there could be a already existing product line let's say the company already makes shirts and they are now launching t-shirts so that's an additional new product line that can come and whether to invest in a t-shirt manufacturing capacity or not is a new product line the firm could go and acquire other firm or projects they could only acquire certain projects right so uh, you, for example uh, someone could go and acquire uh, a complete cement plant or someone could go and acquire only one road project right then changes to the way existing businesses are run so if you are running a business in a certain format let's say you run it in a retail format and you want to take it towards e-commerce so what are the what are the possibilities because of that and entering new markets geography wise and new businesses uh, in terms of completely different uh, businesses altogether let's say you are an fmcg company fast moving consumer goods consumer non durable company and you want to get into cement that's a completely new line of work right new markets would be new geographies essentially so any of these decisions which have a possibility of investing money and which will be evaluated on the returns that will come out of it all of them would be called a project so a project is any financial decision by the firm that has an implication to the returns of the overall firm for the stakeholders right what can be examples now some of the live examples would be uh, acquisition of uh, chorus by tata steel that was to expand their capacity and get access to newer geographies and newer markets chorus is in uk and europe and tata steel is an indian entity so essentially they wanted to kind of expand across the markets expansion of capacity by aishar motors to take up the motorcycle manufacturing capacity from 50000 a year to something like 6 lakh a year over the period of 5 6 years and an online fashion retail channel for aditya birla fashion right so aditya birla fashion is the one which owns pantaloon in india at this point of time and they opened a website called abof.com that's essentially the online fashion retail channel now the decision to open this website and run the business in the form of e-commerce is essentially the example of a project right so that's in a nutshell what kind of examples of projects are now let us evaluate a project using all possible methods that are available with us right so let's say we'll just outline what the project is and then probably continue it with in subsequent sections let us say that the future group is planning to open three stores in the coming few years right so in the next few years these would be a concept hypermarket a very big store a premium electronic showroom right and an apparel showroom like the shopper stop likes of this and premium electronic would be something like chroma right uh, the stores would become operational as follows hypermarket would be immediately operational electronic showroom would be operational after 2 years and apparel showroom will be operational after 3 years right now they have to figure out this entire thing is essentially a project we can also evaluate each of them separately in case we assume that the risk on each of those are different we can just evaluate each of them in one shot in case we assume that uh, the risks on them are uh, the same right we can combine them and evaluate them now there's some more data point that we have they have already spent 500 crore as marketing research expense and you know uh, date money for getting the necessary licenses this amount will not be recovered if the stores kind of uh, Uh, do not get operational for whatever reason depreciation on these this amount would be straight line over 10 years because those licenses are like for 10 years the cost of constructing the stores is given below hypermarket immediate cost 200 crore and another cost of rupees 100 crore in the next year right uh, electronic showroom 100 crore now and 550 crore in the next two years apparel showroom cost 100 crore next year and 50 crore in the year after that right so we can create a timeline around this and try and understand this in more details and we are also given broadly what kind of money they will generate in each of the years and what kind of costs that would be there right in our next section we are going to evaluate this project we are first going to construct the series of earnings for this cash flow and then we are going to evaluate it using multiple methods 
uh, in terms of both accounting earnings and cash flows in the process we will also introduce a few concepts like economic value added right as we go along and understand those data points in subsequent sections and as we end this particular section we just put in a couple of questions here what do we mean by a project give examples to explain your answers and explain how do you reach cash flows from accounting earnings thank you